the old crosscut sled weighs six pounds, 0 0.6 ounces. Let's try to beat that. The crosscut sled lives large in workshop mythology as the most important jig that a woodworker has. I think that's a reasonable thing to say, and most woodworkers that use a table saw would probably agree. If I personally had to choose a single tool, it would be a table saw, and the crosscut sled is the jig that gets the most use on that by far. Today, I'm going to build myself another one and put it through the paces to see if it measures up to all the others. Certainly, there's no crosscut sled that's right for everyone. And I know that after having gone through three or four in this shop across two different saws, I have some very personal preferences that I've developed around specific ways that I use my crosscut sled for the work that I do. It's also worth noting that we have a wall full of sleds over here for everything from jointing to mitering to screwing things to ad hoc for a one time only kind of cut. So even within this shop, there's no best sled but there's definitely a most used sled, and that's the one I'm after right now. While I'm sure you technically could buy a table saw sled, it's not something I've ever seen anyone do, and it's because a sled is not a universal tool. I'd argue that most tools are not universal, but a crosscut sled in particular is very easy to make. So woodworkers have been remixing, riffing, and embellishing them since table saws have had miter slots, and probably before. The one thing that all woodworkers do have in common is that they make things out of wood. So of course they're gonna make crosscut sleds exactly how they want them, over and over and over. Take a look at YouTube and you'll see as many crosscut sled videos as there are woodworkers. In fact, in many cases, a single creator might have three, four, or five different videos making crosscut sleds. There are big ones, tiny ones, norm style, speed runs, five cut methods, compact, fully featured, and of course, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate crosscut sled. Tell me about your sled or one you particularly like down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Mash some buttons while you're down there too. I've built a handful of these types and the best jig is the one that you use. So top of mind for me is going to be a sled that's light and easy to grab. There's a collection of sleds here and the only one I use with any regularity is the littlest one because it's convenient. I don't, however, think this is any kind of single measure for crosscut sled quality. My workflow tends to be lots of experimentation, one-off cuts, and very little batching out of large runs, so switching up my setup quickly suits me. In my previous sled, I was shooting for lightweight above all else, and that's something I can grab with one hand from the ground or from up high on the wall without hesitation. That's the six pounds, 0 0.6 ounces that I'm gonna try to beat. But it looks like my quest for levity got me in a little bit of trouble since the half inch ply that I used potato chipped out on me over the last three to four years since I built it. I'm here in the Hudson Valley, winters are crackly and summers are soupy. So wood movement is very real. I also know that I probably skimped out on the finish on this one because I find applying finish annoying and boring. It's sticky and it smells and I don't like it, but I'm gonna have to get over that on my own time. So to start, I'm gonna use three quarter inch plywood in hopes of reducing the warping. Yeah, I could use MDF here, which is more stable and about the same density as good plywood, but I don't have any and I think I'll be able to keep the weight in range. The main way I'm gonna keep the weight is by removing material wherever I can. I don't really see a reason to keep these corners and removing them gets rid of 23% of the material in the base. I can cut another 16% by drilling out some big chunks with a hole saw. That's 40%, that's a big reduction. A combination of a crappy drill press and an even crap happier hole saw made this process really agonizing. It makes me really wanna CNC badly, but after some burning, some struggling, and a little bit of ad-libbing, I got the pucks out and it looks pretty good. The rest of the build is straightforward as crosscut sleds go. I put a block in the back to hold it together and a fence on the front that I squared up using the five cut method. Link below to that video. The runners are ash that I had laying around. I'm hoping ample polyurethane will keep the elements at bay and these won't bind up come August. But if they do, I will rip them off and replace them with plastic. As I said, I find finishing boring, so I'm gonna skip over that part. Time to take it for a spin.
it cuts great. And the final weight is seven pounds, 1.3 ounces. Well, it feels pretty good, but in the interest of sport, I'm gonna to try to drop one more pound by slimming down the fence. This would have been a lot easier to do before I glued it on. Note to future sled making Ari. So I got that off and cleaned up the cuts a little. How'd we do? Five pounds, 11 ounces. That is a great success. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to spend some quality time with my new lightweight bestie crosscut sled. Thanks for watching.